Yeah, this is the original route or route. Right. And uh, it went up here and ultimately went into the what today is I-5, but back okay. then it was this road. Yeah. But this is the original alignment, not only of the first 1915 road, wow. but of also the 1933 Ridge Alternate, better known as U.S. Highway 99. And so it just kind of, what we were just on, just kind of went through and connected on to what is I-5. Wow. Yeah, well, yes. I-5, you know, the Ridge Route on this end pretty much is covered up by I-5. Right. Okay. Then this became the ridge route underneath here. And we'll come to the next intersection, which is Fraser Mountain Park Road. And as we cross through the intersection, the road, the name of the road changes to Lebec Road. Now we'll take Lebec Road all the way to Fort Tejon. Okay. And Lebec Road is the actual original ridge route. The ridge route technically is between Castake Junction, which is um, at where Highway 126 here to the south of us, right above Magic Mountain. Highway 126 and I-5, that's where it starts. Uh, and it continues north to the bottom of the grapevine. Now that portion of the ridge route, which is known as the grapevine, is the six and a half mile stretch from Fort Tejon to the bottom of the grade or vice versa. The uh, antique car people have pretty well combed it thoroughly, but there have been lots of cars, old cars found down in that ravine. Horseshoe Bend, the road used to really go back in there and come out. You can see the road in front of us, how the cement yeah. curves way back into that cup. Our crew used to come up here once a month and clean the road, but the Forest Service has shut us out. Uh -huh. We're waiting for a new memorandum of understanding and they haven't issued it yet. But a lot of the guys in our group are old timers like myself and this is getting to be a real effort. Yeah, I'm sure. But we've moved we've moved rocks as big as a refrigerator that have wow. come down on Yeah, uh, this is the Tumble Inn, and uh, it was built right around 1926 by uh, Frank Cordemanche, who was uh, the brother of Fred Alfred uh, Cordemanche, who further south constructed the National Forest Inn. Now, Frank was a stonemason, so he used the natural rock that was found locally here to construct the Tumble Inn, which consisted of um, a Richfield gas station today, that would be Arco, of course, and it had a restaurant. The restaurant and gas station have been demolished and the hotel, which was above me, is gone as well. So what remains is simply the steps and the stone retaining wall, which was once a, a, small, a small hotel and quite a pleasant place to, to stay. Um, Louise, uh, the sister of the two gentlemen, ran the hotel. It opened somewhere around 1926, uh, quite late as far as most establishments along the road opened much earlier than this one. The reason it didn't run very long because in 1933 the road was bypassed so 
uh, all the traffic on this original 1915 route uh, rerouted down through uh, down what today is Pyramid Lake and the Ridge Alternate, which was U.S. Highway 99. But it was a nice little place to stay, uh, very quaint. When the Ridge Route opened in 1915, it was one of the first paved roads in California, of course. And that being the case, people were just getting out on the, the mud in those days. So to get on a, a nicely paved road and push your foot all the way down on the accelerator, hey, you were in great shape. But if you came up behind a slow-moving truck, then they were restricted to 12 miles an hour, and you pull out to get around them, and lo and behold, there's somebody else using, trying to uh, come in the opposite direction, there's a head-on collision. But more than likely, when that happened, people would twist the steering wheel left or right in an attempt to avoid a collision, and over the side they would go. And there were so many accidents on this road, and that was one of the reasons uh, the Ridge Alternate, when it opened in 1933, U.S. Highway 99, it opened as a three-lane highway with the center lane as a passing lane for traffic going in either direction. And that didn't work out as well as they thought it would either for obvious reasons. Sometimes people would get in that middle lane and dedicate it as their personal lane. Um, the road, the ridge alternate, was 9.6 miles shorter than this old 1915 road, and it was uh, being much straighter. They, they thought it, that it would uh, eliminate a lot of the accidents that happened up here. Back then, keep in mind, there were no freeways. So when US 99 opened up in 1933, it was very straight, and uh, you could go faster on it. But what didn't happen is the trucks were still going up the grades and people would come up behind these slow moving trucks not realizing they're not going at the same rate of the speed, rear end them. So they had almost as many accidents on the new road as they did on the old. It doesn't figure, but that's the fact. Patrol. It was actually the Automobile Club of Southern California it used to patrol the roads and help motorists. Picture of their vehicle here at the Reservoir Summit. There's some early pictures of the location. And these have uh, never been published before. They're exclusive in my new book. You can see the road, that horizontal line across at the bottom down there. Can you see that? Yes. And if you go to the extreme right, there's a little patch of non-growth area, but just to the left of that is that tree at Kelly's. That's where the cabins were at the Kelly's. Kelly's was the halfway point between Los Angeles and Bakersfield. That's why they called Kelly's Halfway Inn. Additionally, something of interest is if you look close, you can see the foundations of an electric tower there. The Highline Electric Tower was originally uh, sitting on top of those uh, stanchions, those cement posts, but the whole side of the mountain caved in there because those were under, uh, under the earth, you know. They weren't sticking out like that, so they had to relocate the tower because of land. Like I said, this is all area that slips and slides, particularly when it gets wet. So. This is the biggest cut on the road. It is one of the few that they use steam shovels for. Oh, is that right? It's 110 feet deep. And they did employ steam shovels, but on a very limited basis. Otherwise, they would have consumed all the money for roads out of this one bond issue. Interestingly, I mentioned that it cost $1.5 million to build this 1915 highway yes. with bond money. And those bonds were not paid off until 1965, many years after it was replaced in 1933. <laughs> so from 33 to 65, they were still paying for this road. My name is Harrison Scott, author of the Ridge Route uh, Road that united California. And 
what do I want with the 1915 Ridge Route, which is entirely most of it on Angeles National Forest property, is that the younger generation will be able to experience what it was like to motor back at the turn of the century. Fortunately, that portion of the Ridge Route on the National Register and within the boundary of Angeles National Forest is original. Therefore, you get a true experience of how they engineered highways at the turn of the century and the experience of motoring over one. 17.6 miles of the road is on the register and it is traversable but it isn't being saved unfortunately and it's going to wash off the side of the mountain pretty soon. It's in rough condition. Uh, the State Historic Office of Preservation doesn't seem to be too worried about it. The Forest Service doesn't seem to be too worried about it. And here we're at the backyard of not only Kern County but Los Angeles where this 17.6 miles of this historic National Register Road could serve the public so much better but it's sitting there sliding off the San Gabriel Mountains. Very quiet and beautiful up here. Absolutely. Do you still get a thrill out of driving on it? Oh my god, yes. <laughs>